Thanks for watching the Monty Collier Report. I'm Monty Collier. You know, the Westminster Confession of Faith is easily the greatest Christian confession ever penned by fallible men. One way to demonstrate this is to simply compare it to other Christian confessions. In this video, I will compare the Westminster Confession of Faith with another Calvinistic Confession of Faith, the 1689 London Baptist Confession. Now, the 1689 London Baptist Confession was written by particular Baptists, not Calvinists, and sometimes you will hear particular Baptists loosely identify themselves as Calvinists, James White, for example, but this is technically incorrect, for Baptists by definition are not Calvinists. All Baptists reject covenant theology, and so they are disqualified from being identified as Calvinists. They are not Reformed. Even so, particular Baptists are Calvinistic. They hold to the five solas of the Protestant Reformation and the so-called five points of Calvinism. Particular Baptists are Christians, and despite some mistakes, there are many fine writings produced by particular Baptist theologians. John Gill, Gilbert Beebe, and John Bunyan come to mind. Well, all right, uh, let's consider Article 1, Chapter 18 of the 1689 London Baptist Confession. I will focus on the beginning of this article and compare it to Article 1, Chapter 18 of the Westminster Confession of Faith. The London Baptist Confession reads, and I quote, Although temporary believers and other unregenerate men may vainly deceive themselves with false hopes and carnal presumptions of being in the favor of God and state of salvation, which hope of theirs shall perish, yet such as truly believe in the Lord Jesus and love him in sincerity, endeavoring to walk in all good conscience before him, may in this life be certainly assured that they are in the state of grace and may rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, which hope shall never make them ashamed." End quote. Now what I want you to pay attention to is the term temporary believers, which appears at the beginning of the article. Now this term presents us with the notion that one may believe the gospel for a time, but then cease to believe and be damned. Such a notion logically contradicts the doctrines of absolute predestination, the immutability of God, election, irresistible grace, justification by faith alone, and the preservation of the saints. Now, particular Baptists do not believe that an individual can be given faith, believe for a while, then cease to believe, and eventually be damned. As I said before, particular Baptists hold to the five solas and the so-called five points of Calvinism. The choice to use the term temporary believers was simply a poor one. The London Baptist Confession has introduced an unnecessary ambiguity in its chapter on assurance, and this is something the Westminster Confession of Faith avoids. So let's now take a look at Chapter 18, Article 1 of the Westminster Confession of Faith and see how it deals with this subject. The Westminster Confession of Faith states the following, and I quote, Although hypocrites and other unregenerate men may vainly deceive themselves with false hopes and carnal presumptions of being in the favor of God and the estate of salvation, which hope of theirs shall perish, Yet such as truly believe in the Lord Jesus, and love him in sincerity, endeavoring to walk in all good conscience before him, may, in this life, be certainly assured that they are in this state of grace, and may rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, which hope shall never make them ashamed." End quote. Again, that was the Westminster Confession of Faith, Chapter 18, Article 1. Now notice the Westminster Confession of Faith uses the term hypocrites rather than the term temporary believers. A hypocrite is one who pretends to believe the gospel, who intentionally gives a false profession of faith. A hypocrite is not one who believes the gospel for a short time, then ceases to believe it. The Westminster Confession of Faith, with its careful logical precision, has made the correct choice in terminology the Westminster Confession of Faith has avoided the unnecessary ambiguity found in the 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith, and in doing so, demonstrates itself to be the superior Christian confession once again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little comparison as much as I have. God bless your studies.